What's up, everybody? This is Phil Rogacki. And I'm Jared Abergina. You're listening to Two Tree Guys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Phil Rogacki with another episode of the Two Tree Guy Podcast of What's Your Story? Uh, we're in Arbor Fest in Ashland, North Carolina. I almost forgot where we were. Uh, but here in Arbor Fest, uh, man, what an awesome show. It just got kicked off today and uh, a lot of training, uh, some awesome vendors here. Uh, if you guys have never made this show before, make sure you get out here next year or Arbor Fest West, which I think they're going to have this year. Get out there and uh, check it out. But if this is your guys' first time listening to the episode, uh, we have different uh, segments on the show and different shows. We have one, What's Your Story? You're going to hear today uh, by John Sullivan. Uh, we get to hear his story about getting in the industry, the things he'd learned, the mistakes he made, people in his life that's directed him um, to where he is today. Um, we have our full length, which is in the studio in Santa Rosa, California. If you're ever visiting uh, in that area, hit us up. We'll get you on the show. Three, we have our gear talk. Uh, we talk to different manufacturers and different companies out there about different products. Uh, we talk about uh, with different climbers, fallers, whoever it may be about the products they'd like to use. And then four, we have our safety talks, our safety flashes, where we talk about in incidents that may have happened in the industry, how to control them, how to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And just having some real talk with some um, professionals in our industry of how to mitigate this in the future. So uh, we got one fee for the show, guys. And that fee is to pay it forward. So if you like it, you like what you hear today, if you got a laugh out of it, if there's funny stories, whatever it may be, we just ask you to share it with somebody. That's it. That's the fee. Don't be a jerk. Don't keep it to yourself. Put it out there because uh, no one pays us for this. And it's just something we do for the industry uh, in one because we like it. So we appreciate it. But welcome, man. You're What's on the show, on? dude. You're on the show. What's going on, everybody? Uh, it's cool to be on. I listen a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think I've gone through almost every episode. Yeah. What's Maybe your favorite one? Lawrence's. You Lawrence's. Lawrence's. Yeah. I've, um, I've admired the type of energy and uh the content that lawrence brings in his pursuit to educate and do well amongst others and uh yeah i always like what he brings about. he's such a good teacher yeah he's so smooth yeah so calm yeah. nothing riles him up yeah and he just he he knows how to deliver the message yeah and he you know he speaks his mind the way he wants yeah. to speak it you know what i mean exactly. and uh just you know here's my thing is once i learned that there was individuals that had the same type of drive toward this industry that I have and the same type of passion towards it. They're like, Hey, how can we make it better? How can we give to the mm -hmm. next guy? I was like, dude, this is being able to do that for somebody, even on the smallest scale is way more rewarding than taking down a big tree. Yeah. I mean, I still like to take down a big tree, but, <laughs> uh, you know, if I can not to get too far into it, but if I can get behind a guy and get a micro pulley into his system and help him out, I'm like, dude, I, you I, change his whole life. Yeah. Change yeah, his whole life. And yeah. he's thankful for that. And what he does is because you taught him that yep. he goes and shares the same thing to somebody else. Cause yep. he knows how much it affected him. Yeah. As humans, the, the gaining of knowledge and putting it back forth, uh, I think it's our, our bare minimum we should do. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And th this is what this show is about. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you have a story to tell. Yeah. You have a story to tell. And once it goes out there, like I always say, you don't know where it's going to go, or what journey it's going to take, but it's going to get into the ears of somebody that needs to hear your yes. message or your story, or you inspire them to do more than what they're doing today or be better tomorrow than they were today yes. out there from that. So that's why we put on the show. And also too, I always say I put it out there because once it, it lives, it lives forever. And yep. you know, if I'm ever dead and gone, you, Everybody on this gets to listen to me whenever they want, you know. <laughs> it's you know. your own version. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm putting it out there. So, let's let's hear your story. Uh, okay, so I um I'm not no second generation arborist or anything. Where are you like from? Uh, I'm originally from California. Where, where, um, what part? Riverside County. Okay. Uh, born in Palm Springs. Um, okay. Kind of moved around a little bit with my uh, my dad. He moved around in his business a little. So Palm Springs to Big Bear. So you're official Cali boy, which yeah. most of the people that come on here from California, they're not really from California. Right, right. I'm not from California, but I live out there. Yeah. I'm from Ohio. Yeah. So uh, born and raised. Okay. Um, I, uh, my dad was a businessman. And uh, so 
you know, I, I never really saw to aspire towards trade work of any sort. Um, and uh, I was a knucklehead growing up and I got into some stupid stuff. And um, I actually got into tree work um, coming up on nine years um, through uh, rehabilitation. So, uh, you know, I got into some substance abuse issues and stuff like that. How and, old were you then? Uh, 21. 21. So from 18 to 21, I was running and gunning, doing stupid stuff on the streets, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, got probated to go to a recovery program. My dad was like, well, I'm only going to put you through one recovery program, and that's Teen Challenge. So Teen Challenge is a um, Christian-based um, recovery program that uh, the section I went to was work-based, too. So for five hours of the day, you'd go out and do a trade of some sort. And you come back, you would, um, you know, do your studies, you would do your, you know, hey, let's talk about my feelings and why I'm doing stupid things. And they happen to have a tree crew there. And this was in Northern California in Eureka. So we're talking trees, like mm -hmm. monster redwoods. Yeah. And I go out there and they're like, you're going to drag brush with the tree crew today. And I'm like, okay. Like, yeah. The I tree can... crew for Teen Challenges? Yes, yeah. They had their own tree crew? They, so the director was a former arborist. Okay. And he's like, we should teach guys to climb trees. Now... Hindsight's 2020. It was not safe what we were doing. We weren't doing much according to OSHA ANSI yeah. standards or anything like that. But you know what? You were giving young men a purpose. Yeah. And uh, for me, I was a young man without a trait. So as soon as I started dragging brush, and I was like, wait, I can make like a competition out of this. Like, you can't drag as much brush as me. Like, uh -huh. I'm young. I'm strapped. I'm, I'm feeling good. I've got some months clean behind me now. And I was like, dude, wait a minute. I can do this down here, but I can also go up there and do that. Cause you're watching them up. In yeah. The face. Yeah. Yeah. So being a ground guy lasted for about six months. Mm -hmm. I was just going to drag brush harder than anybody. And I was like, let me get a saddle and spikes on. Let me get a saddle and spikes on. So I got that. Um, I spent a year and a half in the program. It's a year minimum. And then the half year you become a junior staff member. And so I eventually became the leader of that tree crew and landscaping crew for that uh, branch of Teen Challenge. And you're working with all the new teens that are coming in and it's helping not, them. So it's called Teen Challenge, but it's 18 to 65. Gotcha. So but I'm, you're working with everybody yes. else coming in there. Yes. And, and what, what were the, all these people, were they all recovering? Yes. or So whether it's alcohol problems, gambling problems, drug problems, whatever. So any like, kind of addiction, anything that's free. destroying their life. Free. Like, free. A free program. Who pays for this? It's a nonprofit. So it's actually throughout the world. It's the number one most successful recovery program in the nation. So it's everywhere. Yeah. Well, I've never I've never heard of this. 86% non-recidivism rate. How how can I, how can we get involved with that? Are, uh, I mean, you still connected with them out there? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I would love some type of introduction yeah. to, to be able to help out with that or give I, I back. I don't know or... if they're doing tree work anymore, but the fact that they're giving young men tools, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, listen, I have nine years in trees and I have nine years clean coming up in May. Save awesome. my life, man. Save That's my life. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. Man. So um, uh, I go through my year and a half, and there was a local tree company that was affiliated, and they're like, hey, if you guy have a, a guy that comes through, completes the whole program, shows that he's decent in tree work, we'll take him on for his first job. And boom, there it was, my first job. I wasn't going to go back what to What company was that? Professional Tree Services. They're still active, um, and I'm actually still in contact with Jeff Wickheiser, who, um, who hired me. And so... Anytime I go to Humboldt County, I go contract for him for a couple of days. Yeah? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Is it the professional green trucks? Green? Yeah, they're like... They're dark big, though. They're, they're, real... they're one one crew company. Oh, they're one crew. Because there's a professional professional tree in Northern California, and they're huge. Yeah. They no, do this, road this clearance, municipality, logging operations. Okay. So this is small. Um, the guy who owned it um, was mostly a logger. Okay. Um, and... I got on, I stayed there for about six months and it was just really slow. It was winter. Um, yeah. I had a fiance at the point at that time too. Um, and I was like, man, I got to get on with somebody else. So I got on with cutting edge tree service then. And I spent a year with them and that was the most exponential growth within a year of, of cutting that I could ever get. Now, why was that? Um, owner operator was a certified arborist and an absolute animal in a tree. Um, then the guy who was the lead climber above me was also just super talented he had been climbing for about eight years. It started in okay. Hawaii, and then he came to Northern California, was mm -hmm. doing his thing. And it's just, we were doing big trees, hard style production. And I mean, like, you know, hindsight, once again, 2020, nobody's making real money. Like, we're all making enough money to get by, enough paychecks to get by. But, like, damn, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> like, like who could drag brush faster? Who could get that done faster? Yeah. Who can make logs land flat? Yeah. And it's just, I mean, you know from being in Northern California, it's big trees and big lessons to learn. Yes. So, I mean... The first three years of my career, 
you know, I spent up there and um, at cutting edge. And, and, well, not cutting edge between cutting edge professional tree services and 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 Teen Challenge. Now, the arboriculture wasn't that proper. I mean, surprisingly, Eureka, their arboricultural practices are really remedial. I mean, you guys have stripping and topping redwoods and leaving them, and they grow back. And it's mm-hmm. just you know you don't know anything better. Everything spikes. Um, which has come to an advantage later on in my career because, like, I am poetry in motion in a pair of spikes. Okay. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, I know guys where I work now that they're like, oh, if it were a pair of spikes for more than an hour, it bruises my shins. I'm like, bro, I would prefer spikes over rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyways, we, we keep going through. And, um, you know, me and my, my now wife, we're getting more serious. And I'm trying to think of better career moves. So, um, I decided to make a swing at the utility line clearance game in California. Okay. Because it's union, the benefits, good pay, you know, checking all the responsible boxes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so uh, we moved to Sacramento. I got on with the SMUD contract. I'm not going to say the contractor because there's some sensitive material that happened within my time there. Um, but within my first uh, four months of working for them, I experienced my first major tree accident while on site for it um a fatality you were on site yeah i actually aerial rescued the guy out of the tree wow yeah yeah so um you know what happened uh it's hard to say we all have our own interpretation of it but we uh we had gotten to a job we were pulling an overhang big old eucalyptus overhang went smooth as butter right and then we get down to these privets that are all growing, not privets, sorry, figs. They're all growing in the primaries. And we're like, hey, we just got to get these 10 done right here. Um, just a bunch of pole printer work, really, if you looked at it. And we're like, hey, we, we handled the big stuff. Let's get this little stuff done and go home. So my foreman at the time kind of running and gunning and just going, going, going. And I will never forget this. The thing he asked me before it happened, he said, hey, what time is it? I said, it's 2.30. We wrap up at 3.30. We had like 15 minutes left. The theory is he made an undercut on a limb. It pinched his bar. He went to grab the limb and pull it, and he pulled it into the single face. This was the foreman? Yeah. So I was on site with another crew, too. And the foreman of the other crew of 17 years just froze. And the only thing I could think of was like, man, he wouldn't leave me up there. Mm -hmm. So I went up there, and I got him. I mean, he was gone. Talk me through that. Talk me through what was going through your head, um, emotions, you know, what were you thinking, uh, your JSA, you know, your your emergency response plan, your team around you. So we, I will say this, we had a good JSA and our overall response was good. I didn't expect me to be the guy to put on the saddle because I had a foreman there of 17 years experience that got down from his tree. His ground guy had six years experience. And here I am, like, I got a few years experience, but not a lot of line clearance. But I'm standing there, and I'm like, hey, we got to call 911. I said, we got to do something. We got to get him down. And Foreman's just froze. He can't even speak. And the other guy's like, I'll call Larry, and then I'll call 911. Larry's our supervisor. And uh, I was like, I, I'm going up and getting him. So I went up there. And luckily, it was only like a 15-foot climb. I was able to get a climb line over things. Um, you know, did a basic double system aerial rescue, brought him down, proceeded to give him CPR for what felt like 15 minutes. But it was all three minutes. Three minutes. And it just, at that point, you know, I, um, the only reason I am able to do tree work today is because his wife called me the next day and said, thank you for doing everything you could. Mm. Only reason I can do tree work today. Man. So, <laughs> sorry. It's a, no. it's a bit to talk about sometimes. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm stuck at a standstill there of like, Hey, this is a really good job. It gives the benefits has the retirement and all that. But like, damn, I'm like, where do I go with this? So this is after that. You're thinking of this. This is after this. Yeah. Because were you contemplating? Do I, do I even stay in this industry? I was contemplating line clearance. Cause let me tell I'm not good at anything else. Yeah. I can't do plumbing. I can't, I can't work on trucks. I'm not, you know, I, I was like, all my cards are in the tree care deck. Um, and I, I love, I love what I do. Um, so interestingly enough, I had paid to go to Arbor Fest two months later. So I show up to Arbor Fest Jared was doing a crane demo with Grant Hamilton. Lawrence was there with Derek Miller doing an SRT DRT thing or SRS MRS now. Yeah. But what got me, Johnny Corthius was doing an aerial rescue demonstration. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, there's a whole other side of this. There is safety and training. 
there is um, there's guys who have a passion for doing this to, to be ready for that next man. You know what I mean? And uh, I was just like, man, I, I, I gotta I gotta find a way to to be involved with not just going and sending big wood, but also teaching the next guy. <laughs> so um, we, uh, you know, I stuck on with Right Tree Service for a little bit over a year. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say who they were, but whatever, <laughs> whatever. Sorry, right? But you know, I nothing against Right Tree Service. Yeah. It was just. You know, people make accidents. Things happen. This is what this industry is. So mm-hmm. um, I stuck on with them for a little bit over a year. And uh, then uh, we decided that I had been far enough away from home. I have a few years sober now. And I was like, man, I miss being close to my pops. You know, my, mm-hmm. my wife being close to her mother. You know what I mean? I was like, let's go back to Southern California. Okay, let's let's make the move. I will find a tree care company down there. I'm mm-hmm. not worried about that. So still stuck with line clearance. Um, I ended up getting on with Mobrics. Um, and I spent all of, um, the last four years with Mowbrays. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Good. yeah. So, um, and, uh, I, I instantly started sticking out there a little bit because I cared about safety culture. Um, I was tying in twice. Mm-hmm. I was using two hands on the saw. I was trying to teach other guys and they're like, okay, okay. This guy's got some stuff. They send me up to Shaver Lake, um, for a project up there doing a bunch of transmission work. Uh, they had a close call up there. And they had some of their higher up safeties like, okay, well, we're going to examine every climber. After that was done, I was the only guy allowed to climb for three months. And wow. then I was helping their safety and trainers. Out of how many guys? Probably a solid 10 other climbers. Yeah. Yeah. And I was helping their safety and training with hands-on training with the new guys. They're like, okay, well, you're going to stand alongside me and you're going to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And I'm just like, dude, this is, this is it. Like, I'm getting towards it. You know, and um, I, uh, I ended up doing uh, kind of the traveling thing with Mowbrace for a while. I got yeah. to work in a lot of different areas. And who were some of the guys that you were working with uh, in that company? Uh, so the guy during that immediate time span that was pouring in a lot was Kevin Kelly. OK, uh, Kevin Kelly is a really talented individual guy. Who is really, he still there? He is. He okay. is. Um, and he's been there for, I think, about seven years now. Gotcha. Um, I got to work uh, not with, but um, in front of Ricky Mowbray. Okay. Yeah, Ricky was actually the guy who interviewed me and hired me on. Is it? Did yeah, dude. Uh, Ricky, Ricky's a cool guy, man. He, he's, he's very cool guy. he's very stoic. He's hard to get a read on. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, talking with him, he's just a guy who has a passion for, for the industry and a passion for what his family has done. And then uh, his younger brother, Wesley Mowbray, is still one of my best friends. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We oh, still man. chit-chat a lot. So That's cool. That's cool. I'm going to get Ricky on the show here. You should. I'm you gonna should. Get him on I'm the show. sure Ricky's got a lot to talk about. Oh, I bet. You'll need a full length. I bet. I bet. Um, so um, I did the travel thing with them for about a year. Um, and then my wife was like, listen, this is a lot. Like you're gone six days a week. You're home on Sunday and you're sleeping most of the day. Like this is just a lot. Like can we try to dial it back in? I'm like, okay, let's let's see what happens. So then I want to say it was right before the pandemic, uh, around 2020, they got a local contract for me. Um, so I was able to work locally in Palm Springs, which oh, – nice. It was nice to go home every day, but like, dude, very anticlimactic. Lots of palm <laughs> trees, lots of just like, ugh. It, it was kind of life draining, and I hit a plateau. And I was like, well, I'm showing up. I'm getting my 40 hours. I'm making good money. This is cool. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and uh, during that time span, my wife got pregnant. We had my daughter Presley, um, mm-hmm. and then I had the dad. I'm like, whoa, 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 what am I doing here? Am I just going to be dad that goes to work every day, provides the bills, or am I going to do stuff to aspire to, to show that there's success in things? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So um, I decided to take a swing, and I applied to get into the safety and training department with Mowbrays. Uh, they took me on right away. Uh, they are like, hey, you need to get X, Y, and Z. I was like, okay, boom, OSHA 30. Okay, ISA certified arbor, CTSP. So but let me back up. What what'd you do when you knew that's what you wanted to do? How would you approach them? How'd you ask them? Because there's a lot of individuals within companies yeah. that go, man, they're they're stuck or they feel they're complacent or just I'm mean, not complacent, but this there's a stale in their job and they want to take that next step. How would you advise them to take that next step within their company or ask? Well, it so my situation was different. There was I, I worked in um, you know, a primarily Hispanic company and there wasn't a lot of guys that I, I had to take a pay cut at first. Because they're like, hey, if you want to make you know, this salary, you need these certifications, but we'll take you on as a monitor, just a safety monitor, go take pictures, do audits, stuff like that. But when you get X, Y, and Z, you will go ahead and jump up to a safety supervisor and trainer. You'll be more hands-on, so on and so forth. So there was the opening there for anybody who wanted it. But a lot of guys are like, well, why would I take a pay cut? Like, I, I don't feel good about taking tests and all that. And let me say this. 
you can pass any test you want to pass. I'm a high school dropout. I'm an ex-junkie. I, I have, none of the cards are in my favor. I can't read like and and stay focused for a game at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Like my whole arborist studying was all audio, all audio. But guess what? I ate, slept, breathed that study until I was you like wanted right, it. Yeah, you had the hunger. Yeah, man. If Nothing you was going to get go in your way. Get it. You want to go get it. You know, and like I don't know. I just think there's a certain cream of the crop that it's like, hey, this is uh, this isn't just my job. It's my or my career. It's like Eric Palacio says, it's my calling. Mm -hmm. So this is my calling. You know, so. I got the certifications and I mean, it, it, here's the thing is, I don't know. I, if you want to go for it, I say, take your swings. You know, I, yeah. Wayne Gretzky said you miss a hundred percent of the shots. You don't take, just take it. Even yeah. if, even if it's going to be right or wrong, just take and it. Like, and like Jared has said, I can always go back and cut trees. Right. Yeah. You know, so I took the swing, I got on with safety and training. Um, and that was up until about seven months ago that I was working with Mowbray's and I was really poured into that. Um, but, things have progressed and uh you know i started looking at the writing on the wall in california and just how hard it is to make it you know the financial stipulations and a few other things i don't agree with and i was just like man i, I think it's time to make a change i want good things for my daughter yeah. so now seven months ago um i'm in oklahoma why oklahoma i have family there okay yeah i my sister because my leaving california it's there's more and more people leaving california yes. a lot more yeah uh but born and raised in california were you nervous leaving to another state no i'm gonna tell you right now no i wasn't because first of all um we did go over there and check things out first and i flew with my gear over there and i and i networked i started talking to people online i joined some of the oklahoma facebook page groups for tree guys and stuff like that i said hey I'm going to come out. I'm a certified arborist. I'm a CTSP. I'm this, that, and the other thing. And I'm going to come out ready to contract client. And I want to see what's up with this tree scene. Had a guy call me I up. I bet you they loved having you Oh, out. dude. Had a uh, guy call me dude, up. Dude, where like, you been my whole life, yeah, man? No, well, no, let me tell you something. There are some very is under there? the radar talented individuals in Oklahoma. And the arbor cultural scene in Oklahoma, especially towards Tulsa, is beautiful. I, I, don't, I don't hear much about Oklahoma. It's unfortunate. I it's don't. dense forestry, hardwoods, not big, tall trees. But, yeah. like, you know what? There is small trees widespread in tight spaces and interesting puzzles to figure out you know what i mean I'm, I'm so much of a firm believer that like small trees and big trees all the same are trees mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. you got to figure it out so um i go over there i contract climb for this guy and you know i put the smack down in like three hours and i'm talking to him i was like what does it really look like over here he's yeah. like well it's like for somebody like you you know you could make pretty good money per day and i'm like okay and he kind of told me he's like this is what you're worth around here and i was like I started doing the numbers mm, in my head. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then I, I call my wife. And, of course, she's kind of like, you should take the job offer that you already have. Over there. Uh, I, I had been talking to another company about a safety and training gig. Yeah. But I, I really had missed production work. I had realized in the time in Mowbray's, like, I like doing safety and training, but, like, I'm only 30. I, I got more sawdust to send. I got more things to do. So um, I... Uh, you know, I told her, I said, hey, like, uh, I'm wrapped up and I've you know, made 450 bucks in three hours. She's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, okay, this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. She's like, well, what about this and the other thing? I'm like, oh, we'll figure it out. Good. Figure it out. You Good. know what I mean? And so, um, anyways, we decided, like, okay, we're going to do this. We put my house on the market. Um, house sale is supposed to go through. We're halfway over to Oklahoma. House sale doesn't go through. But I had spent everything but $40 to get to Oklahoma. And so I'm like, damn, I'm just going to make this work. <laughs> you didn't have a choice. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm like, I can't go back. I can't even afford a gas tank in California. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we, 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 we struggled through fall and winter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just kind of made it work. We learned to live with less. There's a lot of good lessons learned through it. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that the struggle brings out really beautiful things. And I, I embrace the struggle. So we made it through. The house just sold recently. Um, but I... I was like, man, I'm, I'm really going to swing at this. So I opened up my LLC at the beginning Good. of the year. Yeah, How'd so that feel? It was cool. I mean, I'm really terrified about figuring out taxes, but whatever. Wow. What, what's your company called? Century Tree Care LLC. Okay. Um, so it's an ode to my dad. My dad was uh, Century Forms Incorporated. Okay. And so I was like, man, I, my dad's my best friend. You know what I mean? That, I have a lot of industry guys who poured into me. Um, Bill Burley, who's here, has yeah. poured so much into me oh, and is one of my best friends. He's awesome. Dude, he's awesome. That, that guy, it's like, whether it's calling and talking about work or it's just bullshitting, like, 
that I can count on that guy. But, I, t- I talk to him about every other week. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, my, my dad is just the inspiration behind it all. You know what I mean? He's self-made. Um, he's been an absolute amazing father. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, dude, this is this is the guy I want to be. And so I just wanted to give him a little ode with the company name. You mm-hmm. know? So cool, man. Now, um, have, you know, have you been teaching him how to climb and work with the chainsaw? My dad's 83. Oh, uh, he's 83. <laughs> He's 83. He can still shoot guns. He got started but, late in life. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think he was expecting to be swinging for the fences at 55. But, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So, anyways. Good uh, job, Dad. Yeah, What's yeah. What's your dad's name? Shout out Jack Sullivan. He's, Jack uh, Sullivan. Yeah, yeah. Right. Stoic figure. The handshake that you'll remember for your life. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so now it's um, I'm doing work at Central Tree Care, my company. Um, I'm still contracting on the side. And... Uh, I just recently signed on to help with training with Noble Oak Safety and Training with oh, Hans and Jordan. Yeah. Good, so good. I, I have a gig at the beginning of May helping out with utility training in Texas. Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, good, man. Yeah, good. yeah. So it's been, uh, man, it's been such a ride and like it's really just beginning as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know, I, I decided like, you know, for guys out there that are thinking about the self-employment thing and are thinking about it young, take the swing. Like I'm here at 30 and I took the swing and my justification was for it in talking to Bill about it too. He's like, man, you're 30, you have all your certifications, you have so much youth to you. If it doesn't work out in five years, somebody will hire you in a heartbeat. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So why not swing for it and see if it works? Do you, what's what's your feeling by swinging for it? I mean, do you feel free? Do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel challenged? Like what's your feeling in you by taking that? It's a, it's a mixture of fulfillment and staying challenged, right? Because there's so much, uh, Derek was just talking about it outside on the demonstration, Derek Miller. Um, there's so many times that you can- Derek uh, Martin. Martin, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's so many times that you can plateau. Don't worry, he doesn't listen to the podcast show. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many times you can plateau, right? And it's like, for me, I, I like every aspect of it. I love the climbing. Um, I have a ground guy that I'm looking on hiring full time right now, and I like teaching him, and he's super outgoing, and he's uh, he seems like he's ready to learn. Good. I love working with customers. I love showing up to estimates. People are like, I hate estimates. I'm like, bro, this is this is a chance for me to sell myself, to mm-hmm. educate a customer, maybe make a new friend. I mean, yeah. in Oklahoma, maybe a new connection for hunting land. I'll tell you right now, there that's a you thing, go. bro. That's that, a thing, man. I, I knew there was something else to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I did an estimate for a guy over in Maud and he has like 500 acres. And he's like, well, what do you think about this over here? I was like, let me tell you what, man, you give me deer hunting season over here. I'll do that for free. What do you say? I'm still waiting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to give up their I'm land. I'm telling you, bro, it's a thing. And like people disrespect it, but yeah, it's, that's yeah. going far off the, 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 you know, the topic. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like there's so many ways that I need to stay challenged and need to stay engaged. And I feel like the, the owner operator aspect stays engaged on different levels. The contract climber thing is a nice break because I just get to go in, send sawdust, mm-hmm. come down, get out of there. And then the training thing, because I still love educating and I still love you know being able to get to the next man up. Yeah. So um, the fact that I got that opportunity, thanks to Bill Burley and Eric Palacios, um, they gave me a nod. They're like, yeah, we should bring him on board. And uh, I, many thanks, Bill. Many <laughs> thanks, Eric. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> It's just, uh, you know, I feel like I'm just having the balance right now. While yeah. also the biggest balance, though, is, um, and I had to figure it out for my time with traveling, is like I do all that, but when I come home, I'm dad and husband. You know what I mean? So having all that and having to figure out and keep that balance, it's the coolest challenge of my life. Yeah, Hands being down. a dad and a husband. Being a dad and a husband and a tree guy. Yeah, yeah and I'm cool, sure man. everybody here can relate to it. So that's cool. That's cool. And you have one one child. One, one. Her name's Presley. She's okay. 16 months. She'll probably be walking around here tomorrow morning. If all you guys right. Want to take all a look. right. She's, yeah. She's a lot of fun, man. Okay. Cool. She's uh, she's definitely got a lot of my personality. Yeah. So, you cool. Know, it's a lot cool, of fun. man. Well, I'm looking forward to meeting her tomorrow, yeah. man. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring her by the booth. <laughs> John, you got a, you got a story, man. You yeah. got a, you got a good story. Yeah, and, man. And I feel like it's it's just beginning. Yeah. You know, you you probably lived a life of three men you know uh but you got more to give out yeah. there from that and it's cool to see you know the challenges you've been taking and, and taking a swing for it going for the fences you yeah. know uh you got nothing to lose you get one shot in this life you yeah. know and i always say on this on the show it's it's not the things you did in life you're going to regret it's going to be the things you didn't do yes. when you're on your deathbed yeah and you have a lot more to give um and you know people listen to this you're never too old to take a swing yeah you're never too old you can be 50 
80, 30, doesn't matter. Take a swing. Yeah. You got life in you. You got breath in you. You can swing for that. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, man, when are you coming back out to California? <sighs> I'm kind of trying to plan uh, like a vacation slash work thing. Um, I want to go back out to Humboldt um, and I want to go contract in the Redwoods just because Damn, it's a good time. We still have a lot of friends out there, but I'm kind of going to try to correlate it with the Western Chapter Comp. I won't, okay. I won't compete, uh, but I'll just come. And Why not? Take a swing. I might. I, I competed last year. <laughs> I got 30 out of 31, but I got spirit of the competition last year. All right. I'm just saying. Do it again. Keep the energy up. Because well, this I'm year, guy. I think we're bringing it back north. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be That's back north. Because Jared's true. running all the comps now. Yes. From yeah. that. So it'll be back north. So we won't have to travel down to San Diego. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was fun last year in San it Diego. It was. Though. It was cool. It was a cool. really good scene. I mean, the, the hand over hand belay climb was just kicking everyone's ass. But it was a good time. No, I... I think I'll try to correlate it with the competition so that cool. way I can see all the guys, I can hang out with my people, you know what I mean, and uh, make a whole thing out of it. Best thing Great. about being self-employed, everybody, you <laughs> choose your time off. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. Well, appreciate you being on the show and telling your story, guys. Uh, listen, hey, if you guys got something out of this, um, share it. That's all we ask. You know, That's the fee of the show. Share the show. Put it out there so somebody else can hear the show. Uh, we appreciate everybody that listens, all you, all the people out there that support us. Thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts. We do appreciate it. And remember to continue to elevate the standard of the industry through safety, training, innovation. See you next time. Bye.